Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us and welcome to San Francisco and the legendary Bill Graham Civic Auditorium. We could not be more excited to be here this morning and we're so glad that so many people from all over the world could join us, including many of our employees. Hey guys. It's, it's been an incredible year for Apple. We are really firing on all cylinders, and we are about to make some monster announcements across several of our product lines. So we have a big day ahead, and there's no time for updates, so I'd like to get right in and talk about Apple Watch. Yes. Just a few months ago, we made Apple Watch available to our customers around the world. It's already changing their daily lives, and they love using it. They love how quick and easy it is to, to respond and receive to messages and phone calls and notifications from their favorite apps. They're amazed at how Siri on the watch lets them do so much with just their voice, like get directions or send a quick message. With Apple Pay, customers are loving that they can purchase directly from their wrist. And Apple Watch is helping our users live a better day. Closing those rings had become a healthy obsession. In fact, we've been flooded by emails like this one from Dennis saying that the Apple Watch has motivated him to work out and exercise on a regular basis. To many people like Dennis, the Apple Watch has been life-changing. For all of these reasons and many more, people love using Apple Watch. Customer satisfaction is an incredible 97%. Now, despite just launching the watch a few months ago, we are on an incredible pace of innovation. And to tell you about where we're going next, I'd like to invite Jeff Williams to the stage. Jeff? Thanks, Tim. In June, just weeks after launching Apple Watch, we previewed our next generation of OS, and it's packed with powerful features. There are new watch faces, like this beautiful one with time transit, and third-party complications. Third-party complications, this is a big deal. It's, it's a really powerful thing to be able to glance at your wrist and see the information that's important to you and now with third-party complications, you can see even more. Things like the latest news or your airline departure time and time travel. Just rotate the digital crown and view the day ahead. It's the fastest way to see the next couple of meetings or uh, check what the temperature will be later in the day, for example. And we're adding transit to maps, making it easier to find and use public transportation. Now, in addition to these and other built-in features, developers have been hard at work. There are already over 10,000 watch apps on the App Store. <laughs> and now, with native apps, developers can do even more. Apps can display video. They can access hardware, like the microphone, speaker, and health sensors. I'd like to show you a few right now. 
Facebook Messenger is coming to the watch. <laughs> Facebook Messenger allows users to send text, send audio messages, and share their location right from their wrist. And I translate, one of my personal favorites. Just speak into the microphone and see and hear translations in over 90 languages. And GoPro. The wrist is an ideal location to control your GoPro. And now the app turns the watch into a viewfinder. No matter where your camera's mounted, you'll always know where it's pointed and you'll never miss that important shot. And then Airstrip. This is an app that is for physicians and I think it's a great example of just how far developers can go with native apps. But rather than describe it for you, I'd like to bring up Dr. Cameron Powell, co-founder of Airstrip, to demo it for you now. Hey, Jeff. Joining me on stage is Airstrip co-founder, Trey Moore. You know, Airstrip plays an important role in our country's healthcare system, leveraging the use of iPhone and iPad. But here comes another game changer for healthcare, Apple Watch. Let's start with a physician who's viewing his daily schedule, making rounds, and communicating with the team. Now, if I look at my watch face, I can see my next patient, I can notice their diagnosis, and I can actually time travel to see what's next. But let's see what happens if a nurse sends me a notification. Now, within the message itself, I can see the alert, the waveform snippet, vital signs, and the lab results. The reason that I can immediately see all of this relevant data is because once I have the watch on, I am securely authenticated until I take it off. Now let's go back and, and dig a little deeper on that waveform. I really want to know what's happening right now. Now, thank you. Now, this, this wasn't possible until Watch OS 2. But what I really care about is I want to compare what happens in real time to what has been happening more recently. And I can do that on Apple Watch by rotating the digital crown. Now, as you can see, Airstrip magically pulls all this data together into a single view through our Airstrip One platform. And we make it available to Apple Watch for display. But what is so great is I can take action on what I see. Here, I can send a HIPAA-compliant, secure message to a member of the patient's care team. In this instance, I'm going to order a repeat ECG. Okay, we're going to switch gears. Let's talk about how Airstrip with Apple Watch will change how doctors communicate with their patients. Now, Airstrip has been used already to monitor over 3.5 million pregnant women in the hospital. But with our new product, Sense for Baby, we can now monitor these women at home leveraging Apple Watch. So here you see a message from a doctor to the pregnant patient at home asking her to begin monitoring her baby's heart with something called a non-stress test or an NST. Now the mom with the watch on her wrist and connected to the Sense for Baby sensors on her belly starts a test. Now as I can see on this green line, I can confirm that I'm monitoring the mother's heart rate as it's being read by Apple Watch. But I can also see the baby's heart rate and the mother's contractions as they're being read from Sense for Baby. So finally, finally I can differentiate between the mother's heart rate and the baby's heart rate, which has been a problem for many years with home monitoring. Now, while she's doing this test, she can actually listen to the baby's heart rate right on her wrist. That's, thank you. That's really cool, isn't it? Now, when the test is done, she can simply send all that data from her watch back to her doctor. And then later that evening, she gets a message from the doctor telling her, I've read your NST. Your baby's doing just fine. So Airstrip plus Apple Watch together will redefine how messaging and communication occurs in healthcare.
Thank you very much. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? That's, uh, that's why we do what we do. That's why we do what we do. We think the power and potential of Watch OS 2 is unlimited, and we can't wait to see what else developers do with it. I want to switch gears, and I want to talk a little bit about our collection. When we created Apple Watch, we knew it had to be an expression of your personal taste and style. And today, we're offering even more choice. We've been working with a company that we greatly admire on some new watches. This is a company that shares our commitment to excellence and craftsmanship. And that company is Hermes. <laughs> Together we've created a collection. It starts with this iconic double tour that wraps elegantly around your wrist twice. It's made of hand-stitched leather that ages beautifully over time. And joining the Dupla Tour is a, a single tour and a cuff. Each of these has an Hermes watch face that uses their traditional iconography. These are going to be available in select stores in October, and we think people are going to love Apple Watch Hermes. But that's not the only update to our lineup. We've been working on new models and new bands, and I'd like to show them to you now. We're really excited to offer two new finishes, gold and rose gold and anodized aluminum. Now, these are going to come in both sizes, 38 and 42 millimeter, and they're paired with some bands and some fresh new colors. And they're available at the same price as the rest of the sport lineup. This, this adds a whole new dimension to the lineup. You, you actually just have to see them in person. They're really, really beautiful. We've also made some updates to our stainless collection. The space black stainless has been very popular, so we're now adding a model with a black sport band. And we've updated our classic leather with, it's now got a two-tone look, and it comes in black and saddle brown. It's really beautiful. And finally, we're offering a stainless steel case with a product red band. Not only does it look good, but a portion of the proceeds goes to the Global Fund to fight AIDS. I think you're going to love it. One of the things that people love about Apple Watch is the ease with which you can change the band and create a whole new look. And so we're adding a fall collection of new bands ranging from vibrant hues to more neutral tones. And when you pair these bands with different cases, you end up with some truly unique combinations. It's really nice. So that's our Apple Watch lineup. And as we look forward to the, to the holiday season, we're really, really excited with, uh, with new models and uh, new, case, new, new OS with native apps. We think it's going to be a fantastic holiday gift. The new models that you saw are shipping today in these 24 countries. And Watch OS 2 is available on September 16th. That's Apple Watch. I'll hand it back to Tim. Thanks, Jeff. It is amazing what kind of power that you now have on your wrist. 
It's really incredible, and we've got some great new looks. Next up is iPad. Yes, <laughs> iPad. iPad is the clearest expression of our vision of the future of personal computing. A simple, multi-touch piece of glass that instantly transforms into virtually anything that you want it to be. In just five years, iPad has transformed the way we create, the way we learn, and the way we work. We're partnering with the world's leading enterprise companies, IBM and Cisco, to redefine and transform the way people work in the enterprise. As we brought more and more capability and more and more power to the iPad, we've been amazed at the new and unexpected things that our customers have done with the iPad. So we asked ourselves, how could we take iPad even further? Today, we have the biggest news in iPad since the iPad. And I am thrilled to show it to you. This is the iPad Pro. It's the most capable and powerful iPad we've ever created. It is chock full of amazing advanced technologies and innovation. To tell you all about it, I'd like to invite Phil Schiller up. Phil? Thank you, Tim. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I am so excited to tell you about this incredible new iPad Pro. It has a huge screen, the biggest we've ever built in an iOS device. It has new, more power and performance than any iOS device we've ever made either. But let's start with that display. Why make an iPad? with a bigger display. With a larger display, well, think about the iPad from the very beginning. It's a magical piece of glass you hold in your hands, and you can touch the software. You can touch the web pages we surf. We can touch the books we read. We can touch the documents we create. And it can do things that a smartphone can't do because it doesn't have to fit in your pocket. And it's thin and light enough to hold all day long so that it can do things that a notebook can't do. So with a bigger screen iPad, your TV shows and movies are more cinematic. The games we play are more immersive and powerful. And an iPad is always a multi-touch device. So now with a bigger iPad Pro, you can have a full-size software keyboard. So you can type in your documents with this great big keyboard. And keyboards can do many things, like be an amazing musical instrument. Yeah, somebody likes music. We can do something on an iPad that you can't do on a notebook. And the new multitasking features in iOS 9 
slide over, split view, picture in picture, were designed with this iPad Pro in mind. They make it so much more productive and capable. So how big is the screen on the iPad Pro? It's 12.9 inches on that diagonal. Why 12.9 inches? Well, here, let me tell you a little secret about its size. Let's put next to it our previous largest iPad. That's iPad Air 2. If you look at the width of the iPad Pro, it is the same as the height of the iPad Air. And then we take that height and we make a four by three ratio. And now you have an iPad big enough to run your full iPad Air apps with more room side by side. It is an incredible display. It is 2732 by 2048 pixels. Do the math, it's 5.6 million pixels. Far more than on any iOS device before. In fact, that's even more pixels than a 15 inch MacBook Pro with Retina display. It is a beautiful display. Your photos will look amazing on it. Huge, incredibly detailed, rich colors. Your documents will be full size with laser sharp text. And I'll say it again, watching movies on it is incredible. It's an amazing experience. This is the most advanced display we have ever built. It took some incredible innovation in technology. For example, we used the technology that we created in the iMac with Retina 5K display and its timing controller to drive all those pixels quickly. We made it look beautiful with our photo alignment technique, which means it has great on access contrast ratio. It's made of the best oxide TFT material, which means we can light up the pixels quickly and have uniform color and brightness. And for the first time in an Apple display, it has a variable refresh rate. That means that if things aren't moving quickly on the display, we can slow it down and save energy. This is an amazing display. And inside it, something even more amazing, the chip that powers it. This is the new A9X chip. It's our third generation 64-bit chip. We've doubled bandwidth to memory. We've doubled the read and write performance to flash storage. It is so fast. How fast is it? The new A9X is 1.8 times faster than the A8X it replaces. This is desktop class performance. If you compare what our team has done, our chip team is just on fire. Over the last five years, they've grown performance in the iPad 22-fold for CPU tasks. And graphics tasks are even faster. We've doubled the performance of graphics over the A8X. And over the last five years, this is unbelievable. Graphics performance has gone up 360 times. The biggest jump in this year alone. You combine that fast hardware with great software, like in iOS 9, our metal libraries for writing games and applications directly to that graphics chips, and you get incredible performance. But here's another way to think about how fast iPad Pro is. It is faster than 80% of the portable PCs that shipped in the last 12 months. Yes. That's at CPU tasks. At graphics tasks, it's faster than 90% of them. So when you run tasks and applications that we all love to use, they get incredibly fast. For example, iMovie. Running iMovie on an iPad Pro delivers desktop class performance. With iMovie, you can now edit three streams of 4K video simultaneous. That's incredible performance. And it's going to enable new classes of applications for iPad. For example, check this out. This is AutoCAD 360 from Autodesk. It's an incredibly powerful application. This image has 320,000 objects in its wireframe mesh. And you can zoom in and pan around it with buttery 60 frame per second smoothness, something you can't do on a PC. And all that power comes with all day battery life, 10 hours of battery life. So we've got an amazing display, incredible performance, great battery life. With so we thought this display deserves a great sound system. And so for the first time ever, 
in an Apple product, we now have a four speaker audio system. And it automatically balances the left and the right depending on how you're holding the iPad. And it balances the frequencies between the top and the bottom dynamically to create a beautiful stereo sound stage. And it puts out three times the audio volume of an iPad Air 2. You really have to listen to it. It's amazing. And that's packed into a device that's incredibly thin and light. Here's the iPad Pro. Let's bring in the iPad Air underneath it. And you can see they're both amazingly thin. The iPad Pro is just 6.9 millimeters thin. The iPad Air, 6.1. Very, very close. What about the weight of it? Well, here, let's bring in the original first iPad. It's kind of fun. They're both just around a one and a half pounds, which is unbelievable because the iPad Pro has a 78% larger screen area. It has 360 times more graphics power. It is thin and light enough to hold all day and powerful enough to take everywhere, whether you want to watch movies in the park or edit a film on location. This is an amazing iPad. But the story doesn't stop there. Let's go back to that software keyboard. It's a great keyboard. It dynamically changes as we use different applications. And it's how most of us will type on our iPad Pro. But because we're enabling applications not possible before in an iPad, sometimes you like the convenience of a physical keyboard. So we're very excited to tell you about a brand new accessory just for iPad Pro, and it's called the Smart Keyboard. This is unlike any keyboard you've ever used before. It's covered in an Apple woven fabric. That fabric creates the cover, but also forms the structure and the feel of those keys. And they feel really great to type on. Inside is a new Apple dome switch that we pioneered with the MacBook. And it works beautifully in this great new smart keyboard. So how do you attach or connect this smart keyboard to your iPad Pro? But if you look closely, there are three new circles along the side of the iPad Pro. This is a brand new connector technology. We call it the Smart Connector. It carries power and data and connects magnetically to the Smart Keyboard. So when you want to attach your iPad to the keyboard, you just slide it on it. And the software in iOS 9 automatically adapts and changes because it knows you want to use the physical keyboard versus the soft keyboard. So that's the new smart keyboard designed specifically for the iPad Pro. So that's typing. Let's talk about drawing and illustration. Customers have created amazing works of art, drawing on their iPads with their fingers. iPads are all about multi-touch, and we will continue to use our hands to interact in amazing ways on iPad. But iPad Pro is going to enable new classes of applications that require even greater precision ever possible before. A new level of precision and accuracy that requires some amazing innovation. So we're so happy to introduce to you another brand new accessory specifically for iPad Pro. It looks like this. It's called Apple Pencil. <laughs> and this Apple Pencil is packed with so much amazing new technology. We have a great video to tell you all about it now. Touch, of course, is the primary method of interaction with iPad. To enhance what's possible with multi-touch and to allow for a new level of precision with iPad Pro, We've designed Apple Pencil. This began by re-engineering the touch subsystem of the display to measure both finger and stylus input on the same plane with optimal accuracy. When you're using the pencil, the system scans twice as often, allowing iPad Pro to capture more points in a single stroke. Highly responsive sensors built into the tip of Apple Pencil work with the iPad Pro display to detect position, 
force and tilt. With force data, you can press lightly to get a thin stroke or press harder to get a darker, bolder stroke. Signals emitted from two locations in the tip calculate the angle and orientation to produce broad or shaded strokes. Its unique tip signature allows it to be used simultaneously with your finger. And with incredibly low latency, it has a responsiveness that feels like a true writing or drawing instrument. While its battery lasts for hours of use, a lightning connector lets you recharge by plugging directly into iPad Pro. Apple Pencil is designed to look and feel like a familiar tool. Yet with its carefully engineered technology, working with our most advanced multi-touch display, it delivers something extraordinary. Precision that actually gives you the ability to touch a single pixel. This Apple Pencil is absolutely amazing. And to get that level of low latency so it feels like you're drawing directly on the display took an incredible effort of collaboration between our hardware, software, and design teams. And, and they've done a remarkable job. And customers are going to feel it every time they use it. They can use it within built-in apps in iOS, like our new Notes app, where you can draw and diagram directly with Apple Pencil. Or in Mail, where now with our new markup feature, when someone sends you an attachment, you can draw and mark up right on that attachment and send it on to them. You're going to see new applications from developers that have created features that take full advantage of this huge iPad Pro display, all its power, and most of all, Apple Pencil. Like Procreate, an incredible foreign art illustration and drawing application that just comes alive on iPad Pro. And applications we've not seen before, like this. It's called UMake, designed specifically for iPad. and takes full advantage of that display and that incredible Apple Pencil. Well, Apple Pencil is one of the most advanced technologies we've ever created in a simple, beautiful form. And we've been lucky enough to have a few developers come in and take a look at the new iPad Pro and Apple Pencil and see what's possible with this incredible new technology. So we'd like to do a few demos. And to begin with, it would be great to have a developer come and show us what's possible with professional productivity. And who to know better about productivity than Microsoft? Yeah, these guys know productivity. So I am extremely pleased to introduce Corporate Vice President from Microsoft Office, Kurt Konigsbauer. Kurt? Thank you. It's a, it's a thrill to be here today. At Microsoft, we're focused on reinventing productivity to help people do their best work anywhere they're working. And today, more than ever, we are supporting Microsoft Office on Apple platforms. And I'd like to introduce uh, Han Yi, who's going to walk us through some cool demos. Up on the screen, you'll see a beautiful Microsoft Word document on the gorgeous new iPad Pro. Now, with the Office iPad, we want to make it easy for anyone to create rich content and documents using touch. And so watch a quick example here. We can just, with a few quick taps, take this table, add styles, and turn it into a really, really great document. Now, we want to extend this richness with a new iPad Pro with ink, so we can allow anyone to mark up and annotate their documents and collaborate with others. And so if you look underneath the ribbon, you'll see we have a variety of new pen tools. There's uh, different pens and pencils. One's a highlighter. You see this fabulous new color wheel, so you can pick just the color that you want, and a new thickness control, so you can get the point that you need. Now, watch as we can use the Apple Pencil and circle items in our document. We can strike through, we can add suggestions, and we can write in the margins. And you'll see it's also great for multilingual usage, too. Now, because Office is built for teamwork, all of these changes are stored in the document itself and can be viewed on any Microsoft Office application on any device. 
Now the next thing we want to do is add a chart to our document, and so we've started the chart in Excel. So we'll take advantage of iOS 9's multitasking capabilities. With a quick swipe, we can have both Word and Excel on the screen at the same time. Now for Office, the document is king, so having these two applications side by side is a huge productivity boost. It allows us to do things like copy and paste this chart that you see and put it into Microsoft Word. Now, well, let's finish up our PowerPoint presentation that goes along with this document that we're working on. And once again, we'll use iOS 9's multitasking capabilities, have both apps up on the screen at the same time, and we can copy this chart also into our PowerPoint presentation to finish it up. Now, just like Word, just like Excel, PowerPoint has great support for the Apple Pencil and for Ink, and so watch as we can go ahead and draw some shapes here on our, uh, on our slide, and they're converted automatically to graphic objects. Let's take this. Let's take this to the next level. We'll go to this slide. You see it has just a, a simple list. We want to turn this into a high impact diagram. Now we can use the Apple Pencil or just touch. Here we'll just use touch and watch as we draw three circles. Let's draw three circles and you will see that PowerPoint converts them automatically into shapes. Now we'll support shape recognition for over 20 different object types. So you can take your hand drawn art and annotations and convert them into professional looking content. So this is the new Microsoft Office on the new iPad. And at Microsoft, we really believe that bringing together uh, the iPad Pro with Microsoft Office, the ink, the multitasking capabilities will really transform the way people work on these kinds of devices. Thank you very much. Next, we'd like to see what it's like for creative professionals to use the iPad Pro in their workflow. And who knows better about creative workflows than our good friends at Adobe. And Adobe's been doing incredible things on iPad with their Creative Cloud mobile apps. And now, on iPad Pro, they're working on a brand new suite of applications that's incredibly powerful and can do amazing things. So I'm very excited to bring out the Director of Design for Mobile Apps at Adobe, Eric Snowden. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I'm really excited to show you three different Adobe applications all working together on the iPad Pro. The first of which is Adobe Comp. And Comp is a design tool that's as easy to use as drawing on a napkin. So by creating an X on the left-hand side of the screen, I'm creating an image placeholder. We have uh, gestures for headline copy, body copy. We can very quickly lay out a rough design. These elements are temporarily grouped together so I can adjust them as a group. And so I've gone from nothing to a rough wireframe in about 15 seconds. Um, from there, I want to add real fonts, make this a little bit more high fidelity. This is the first time on a mobile device we've given access to typekit fonts. We have over 1,000 fonts available. So I'm going to go ahead and select this headline text. I'm going to change my copy to be ruby red, which is uh, the theme for this design. And I'm going to apply some styles to my body copy as well, a simple gesture to copy styles from other objects. And lastly, I want to add a photo from my camera roll. So I've got a rough design here. I'm pretty happy with it, but I'm not quite happy with the model smile. I wish she had just a little bit more of a smile. Um, I think it'd warm up the design quite a bit, but luckily we have an app for that. So I'm going to go into multitasking mode and, um, Multitasking is amazing on the new iPad Pro. Side by side, it's like having two screens. And I'm going to send this image from Comp into a brand new application called Adobe Photoshop Fix. And Fix is a product we're announcing today. It's a member of the Photoshop family for retouching. Um, and it's insanely fast on the new iPad. It can process up to 50 megapixel images very, very fast. And has all the features you'd expect of an app that's part of the Photoshop family. But something not even Photoshop on the desktop can do we built facial detection into the retouching engine. So if I select the model's lips, for example, I can isolate those and just give her just a little bit more of a smile. <laughs> and then I can send that change back to comp. So for the last app, I'm going to open up Adobe Photoshop Sketch, which is our painting and drawing application. And with Sketch, we've really tuned it to work with Apple Pencil. It's, it's incredible. And with our new watercolor tool, if you use the pencil on its side, you're laying down more water and less pigment. If I use it upright and press harder, 
I'm laying down more pigment and less water. And you can see it blending in real time. At any point, I can click this button here to dry that. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, close out of multitasking, and then paste this back into my comp document. So with a couple other small tweaks, I'm gonna finish up this design. And it looks pretty good. I went from a blank page to a design in just a few minutes using three different applications together. But I think the most impressive thing out of all this is all this work is non-destructive. So at any point, if I put three fingers down on the screen, I can scrub back in my history, back to my blank document, and then all the way back to my final design. So you never have to worry about making a mistake or losing your work. It's all safe here. So that was Adobe Comp, Photoshop Fix, and Photoshop Sketch. And at Adobe, we're making tools that are powerful enough for professionals and easy enough for anyone to use. Um, this workflow is only available on the iPad when we'll be shipping in October. Thank you. Thank you. For the last demo, we wanted to show you something that really requires the incredible performance of graphics for the iPad Pro and an application that's pretty amazing. It's an application that helps to visualize human anatomy and assist doctors, patients, and students in medical school. And to show you this incredible new application and how it runs on iPad Pro, I'm very excited to show, bring up the head of design at 3D for Medical, Irene Walsh. Irene? Thank you. In the average medical consultation, the patient is with the doctor for just seven minutes and they only recall 14% of the information they receive. At 3D for Medical, we believe that clear understanding between doctors and patients leads to better healthcare and ultimately to better patient outcomes. I'm excited to show you how with the new iPad Pro, our complete anatomy series has bridged that communication gap. So let's imagine I'm a doctor. I'm speaking with my patient about their injured knee. I can zoom right into the knee area to show them more about the bones that work here. The incredible CPU and increased memory of the new iPad Pro mean that I'm now seeing these textures at double the resolution of previous versions. And with the poly count of our mesh also doubled, I'm experiencing new levels of medical accuracy. Now let's turn on some muscles, and we can see how they interact with the skeleton to create movement. The quadriceps you see here are being animated in real time at 60 frames per second. Just imagine how groundbreaking this will be for physical therapy patients in understanding and visualizing their treatments. This motion is fully controlled by me, and it's seamlessly rendered by the new iPad Pro. To get a little context, I can turn on the skin there to help orientate. We've taken full advantage of the Apple Pencil by introducing unique cutting and drawing tools to our app. As a medical student, for the first time, I'll be able to edit the model rapidly and with pinpoint precision. I can cut through the layers of anatomy to reveal the relationships between structures and even simulate surgical procedures. As a trained physician, I'll use complete anatomy to educate my patient on their condition. So let's say my patient presents with a torn meniscus. I can bring up a preset view of the knee area to highlight the relevant structures. Then to make the injury more specific to my patient, I can take the Apple Pencil and make a precise tear on the meniscus directly on the model. I can then show my patient their particular injury in 3D. Using the pressure sensitive technology, I can model the effects of arthritis, varying the size and the frequency of bone spurs according to the force that I apply. I can even annotate while still in this 3D environment using our pen tool to draw directly on the model or using our automatic labeling function. What's really great about this is that I can, I can actually share this exact 3D model with my patient and record a consultation for them to refer to in complete anatomy on their own iPad. 
We believe that the new iPad Pro and our Complete Anatomy series will transform the way doctors and patients communicate, increasing medical understanding and improving patient care from remote villages to the top hospitals and universities in the world. Thank you. So now you've seen the kind of applications that can run on iPad Pro. They are truly transformative. This is the most advanced iPad we've made by a long shot. It's a 12.9 inch retina display. It's our A9X, third generation 64-bit chip. It has, for the first time, a four speaker audio system. Full all day, 10 hour battery life. It has an eight megapixel iSight camera. It has a FaceTime HD camera. It has Wi-Fi and LTE networking, of course, our great Touch ID built in. And it's all made in the most environmentally friendly manner possible. A mercury-free LED backlit display, arsenic-free display glass, VFR-free, beryllium-free, PVC-free, and of course, that aluminum glass is highly recyclable. The new iPad Pro comes in three finishes, silver, gold, and space gray. So I know right now you're just thinking, how much does it cost? Because I want one. Well, the new iPad Pro starts at just $799. That's with 32 gigs of memory. For 128 gigs, it's 150 more. And there's a configuration with 128 gigs in LTE networking. The new iPad Pencil. Excuse me, the new Apple Pencil, $99. And the Smart Keyboard, $169. And they'll all be available starting in November. There has never been a product, anything like iPad Pro before. We're so excited about it that we created a video to tell you a little bit more about it. With its scale, with the way you use it, iPad has always been uniquely immersive. To amplify this, to put it on a much larger scale, we designed iPad Pro. It begins with a 12.9 inch retina display on an iPad that remains remarkably thin and light. With 78% more screen area, iPad Pro not only transforms your viewing experience, it enables new ways of creating and sharing. To give multi-touch a greater level of precision, we completely re-engineered the touch subsystem, increasing the sensitivity of the sensors and doubling the touch refresh rate. It's actually the most advanced display we've made, and with 5.6 million pixels, it has the highest resolution of any iOS device. This is the first iPad to automatically adjust the number of times the display is refreshed, depending upon what's on the screen. This leads to greater energy efficiency and the all-day battery life you'd expect. Driving its high level of performance is the powerful A9X chip. It was specifically designed for iPad Pro and to meet the demands of a much larger display. Its size lets you do and see more. And its precise multi-touch technology allows for new forms of input while enhancing the capabilities of iOS 9. To produce a rich audio experience within this device's thin profile meant developing an entirely new four-speaker architecture. For the first time, the speaker housing is machined directly into the unibody enclosure and sealed with a carbon fiber cap. Its four speakers give iPad Pro a powerful acoustic output and dynamic range that far surpasses its size. With people using iPad in more and in different ways, we wanted to enhance its flexibility. To do this, we've developed a new technology. Its magnetic contacts relay both power and data bi-directionally. 
so you can easily connect compatible accessories without the need for Bluetooth or batteries. iPad Pro enables tools and interactions that just haven't been possible before. iPad continues to transform the way we do things. Our goal in designing iPad Pro was to engineer a device that allows you to be more productive, more creative, at an entirely new scale. Well, that is the new iPad Pro, and we could not be more excited about it. It's the flagship in our iPad line. And starting today, this is what the iPad line lo looks like. We've now moved iPad Mini 2 down to become our entry-level iPad at a new lower price, just $269. Above it is the brand new iPad Mini 4 that we're also launching today. So what's the iPad Mini 4? Well, simply, we've taken the power and performance of iPad Air 2 and built it into an even smaller mini enclosure. It's just 0.65 pounds, incredibly powerful and yet small and light. iPad Air starts at $399 and the iPad Pro at $7.99. And so that's our news about iPad. Thank you very much. Thanks, Phil. Terrific. This iPad Pro is really amazing, and we can't wait to see what our developers and customers do with it. Next up, I'd like to talk about an even larger screen. And that is your TV. <laughs> TV. TV plays a huge role in our lives. And it occupies an important place in our homes where we gather and enjoy it together. There's more great content being created today for TV than ever before. It really is the golden age of television. But as important as TV is, the TV experience itself hasn't changed that much in decades. In fact, the television experience has been virtually standing still while innovation has been thriving in the mobile space led by iPhone and iPad. Today, we are going to do something about that. And it starts with a vision, and our vision for TV is simple and perhaps a little provocative. We believe the future of television is apps. In fact, this transition has already begun. We're spending more and more time on our computers and mobile devices, enjoying great TV content through apps such as iTunes and Netflix and Hulu. Over 60% of the pay TV streaming video is consumed on an Apple device, and all of this is consumed through an app. And when you experience TV in this way through an app, you realize just how much better it can be. Now, you can search for what you want, you can watch it when and where you want. And you can interact with it in incredibly powerful new ways. To deliver on this vision, we need a new foundation for TV, one that's built on powerful hardware, that runs a modern operating system, that provides a new user experience that's fun and easy to use that has powerful tools and APIs so developers can create apps that are amazing just like in the mobile space. And of course, that has an app store so that customers can easily find those apps and personalize their TV experience so it's better than ever before. We know this is what it takes. And we've been working really hard and really long 
to bring all of these together. Today, I'm thrilled to show you the new Apple TV. Siri, show me something new. Girls? Mm, new girl. Show me family movies. Animated only. Just the new ones. Comedies with Jason Bateman. The Jason Bourne movies. Anything with Jason Schwartzman. Spit out the gum, sister. In fact, everybody. This is the new Apple TV. And we believe it is the future of television. To tell you all about it, I'd like to invite my colleague up, Eddie Q. Eddie? Hey. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. The new Apple TV starts with a powerful set-top box and a revolutionary remote. It's got an incredible new user interface. It's built on a modern OS. With an iPhone, you interact directly on the screen. And we wanted to bring the same connected experience to your television, even though it's across the room. And to do that, it starts with voice and with touch. The new remote, sorry. The new remote has a glass touch surface across the top that makes it both fluid and precise to move around. We have a great touch experience, and you can easily glide across a set of movies, and when you see one you like, you just stop, and it's right there. Now, sometimes it's better to interact with your television using your voice. And the Siri remote does exactly that. You hold down the Siri button, and you ask for something. Show me funny TV shows. Siri gives you a list of comedies. sorted by popularity, and it comes out layered right on top so you don't lose your place. And when you see a show you like, you tap and you get all of the details. Seasons, episodes, and all of the screens have been redesigned. They look beautiful and they focus on the content. Now today, when you're looking for a particular TV show or movie, you have to search and open each and every app to see which one has it. Well, with Siri, It'll search across multiple content apps and give you all your viewing options on a single screen. It's really cool, and Siri will search iTunes, Netflix, Hulu, HBO, and Showtime. And we'll be adding even more over time. Now, to give you a closer look at the new Apple TV, I'd like to invite up Jen Foles from the Apple TV team to give you a demo. Thanks, Eddie. Hey guys. I'm really excited to be the very first one to show you the new Apple TV, starting off with our gorgeous new screensavers. It looks like a photo, right? But do you see the cars moving? Let's look at another one. This is all high def video that we've shot exclusively for Apple TV. Each slow motion shot reveals the scene in a way that is truly captivating. We've included some stunning locations from around the world, and Apple TV will automatically play just the day or night shots, depending on your time of day. 
Okay, now let's dive in by pressing the home button. So here I am on the home screen. I have access to movies and TV shows on iTunes. One of the great new things on Apple TV is the App Store. Of course, I have access to my photos and we've added Apple Music. Now, Eddie talked about the fantastic new ways to interact with Apple TV. And with touch, I can just swipe across my apps. I can swipe up to top movies and notice the 3D effect on the artwork as I move around. It's easy to swipe one by one or a quick swipe to go all the way across. It's fast and fluid. The movie poster follows the movement of my thumb on the remote. Really makes it come to life. Now, the other great way to interact with Apple TV is with my voice. And with Siri, it's easy to find exactly what I want to watch. Like when my favorite actor makes a guest appearance in a TV show. Show that Modern Family episode with Edward Norton. Siri takes me right to the Modern Family page with the episode I was looking for already selected. I just clicked to play. Makes that step. Now touch also makes it really easy to move through the show. I just More. click and swipe. Let's see if we can find Edward Norton's cameo. Oh, I think I saw him. Oh yeah, there he is. Oh, come on, man, she's not your sister. Give her a proper snow. <laughs> <laughs> I can use Siri during playback as well. Skip ahead seven minutes. The year was 1991. And America for those times when I just missed what was said, what did she say? Siri will skip back 15 seconds and temporarily turn on the caption. So cool. Okay, back on the home screen, Siri's also really great in helping me find something to watch, even when I'm not sure what it is. Show me some action movies. Okay, this looks good. I really like Skyfall. How about a Bond film? The James Bond ones. Mm, I'm in the mood for a classic. Just the ones with Sean Connery. With Siri? Cool. With Siri, I can easily filter my search based on cast, director, date, even age rating. Speaking of which, my niece is coming to visit and I don't even know where to start, so let's see what Siri suggests. What are some new movies that are good to watch with kids? All right, great. Um, Paddington looks good. When I click on the movie, I'm taken to this beautiful full screen view. It has all of the important details right up front, including where the movie's available from. Let's play it. This looks great. Now touch also lets us eliminate many buttons and menus. I can just rest my thumb on the remote to see where I am in the movie, and swipe down to get quick access to info and other settings. Just swipe up when I'm done. I can ask Siri information about the movie too. Who stars in this? Siri will answer on the bottom of the screen to avoid disrupting what I'm watching. It's great for getting in the moment info like sports scores. How did the San Francisco Giants do yesterday? <laughs> I can also ask about the weather. What's the weather like in Juneau, Alaska? Okay, looks pretty good, but if I want more details, I can just swipe up. Siri will automatically pause the movie in the background and give me more information about the weather. And we've taken the beautiful animations from iOS and adapted them for the TV, so they're going to look stunning. 
it's super easy to switch between apps on Apple TV. Open Music. I'm taken right to Apple Music, and let's browse for you. This playlist looks really good. So you probably wouldn't have guessed it, but I'm actually quite a metalhead, and this is one of my favorite bands. All right, just a click of the home button, and I'm back on the home screen. That was just a quick glimpse at the new Apple TV. Thanks. Thanks, Jen. That was incredible. Uh, the new Apple TV is so much fun to use. Now, you also have access to all of the great content on the existing Apple TV, but we've redesigned all of our apps iTunes Movies, iTunes TV, and we've even brought Apple Music to the big screen with over 30 million songs. Playlists and albums recommended just for you. Listen to the latest releases. Play curated radio stations, including the critically acclaimed Beats One. And of course, access to your full music library, all from the comfort of your couch. But as we've said, the future of TV is apps. Now, apps have changed what we expect from and do on our iPhones and iPads, and we think it's going to do the same thing for television. We're introducing a brand new operating system for your Apple TV called TVOS. It's based on iOS and built for the living room. And developers are going to love it because it's really easy to create apps. They use familiar tools like Xcode, and they have access to great iOS technologies like Metal, Game Center, UIKit, and CloudKit. And with over 11 million developers, we can't wait to see what apps they bring to the big screen. Now, we've given some developers early access, and I'd like to show you some of the cool new apps that they're working on. Great custom experiences from content apps like Netflix. Beautiful imagery and a great UI from HBO. Primetime television shows from Hulu. Incredible games like Galaxy on Fire, Raymond Adventures, and even games that have only been available on consoles, like the new Disney Star Wars game called Disney Infinity, one of my personal favorites. Activision is bringing the new Guitar Hero to Apple TV. Shadowmatic. This is an imaginative puzzle game that's been a huge hit on iOS. We've got engaging apps for kids, like Play Kids, Zova, a fitness app that works with your Apple Watch, Madefire, a whole new way to enjoy your comic books. And you can even sit your whole family around the TV and plan your next vacation with Airbnb. And when you're looking for a new home, Zillow. Now, I'd like to give you some live demos of a few new apps and first up, I'd like to invite up Andy Sum from Hipster Whale. Thanks, Eddie. Crossy Road is an endless arcade hopper that's been downloaded over 40 million times on iOS. Three months ago, we received an Apple Design Award, and there's a small indie studio from Melbourne, we're thrilled to be able to bring our game to the living room. We're super excited to be here today to show all of you, for the first time, just how much fun it is to play Crossy Road on the new Apple TV. The new remote allows some natural controls as Tom swipes to hop left and right and clicks to jump forward. This gives you the precision to dodge cars, leap across logs, and even hop past fast moving trains. Go Tom, go. <laughs> <laughs> or not. We've still included all the hilarious characters you know and love, like Chicken, Mallard, Emo Goose, and Giddy Goat. But every day, we hear stories of players laughing together with Crossy Road. So today, exclusively on the new Apple TV, we're announcing Multiplayer. <laughs> now, you can truly play Crossy Road with family and friends. I'll join Tom now, playing as my favorite character, the Mallard. Thanks. 
We've created a simple and easy way for anyone with an iPhone or iPad to jump right into the action in this new multiplayer mode. <laughs> Cooperative play allows the best Crossy Road players to help out those who are new to the game. Thanks, Tom. As long as one of you is still hopping along, the team will continue to rack up points. <laughs> now, cooperative play is a lot of fun, but we've all got a competitive side. And this is where Crossy Road on the new Apple TV really shines. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mate. It's just so much fun to push and block your friends. <laughs> so whether you're playing the classic single player, cooperatively or competitively, we really think you're going to love Crossy Road in your living room and it will be available when the new Apple TV is out. Thank you. Thanks. It's great to see a classic iOS game now on your Apple TV. Now I'd like to turn to a whole brand new game, and I'd like to invite up John Carter from Harmonix. Thanks, Eddie. Good morning. With Rock Band, Harmonix brought music games to living rooms around the world. Now, Apple TV has allowed us to mix music with another passion the whole family can share. With me is Mike Fitzgerald, and on behalf of the team, we are thrilled to introduce Beat Sports, a collection of games for the whole family designed specifically and exclusively for Apple TV. All right, this guy here is Throbot. Watch how Mike hits his rhythmic pitches by actually swinging the remote. The better his timing, the higher his score. Harmonix games let everyone interact with music, regardless of your musical background. And the new remote makes that interaction more intuitive than it's ever been. Beat Sports combines the joy of hitting balls with the joy of hitting notes. It's simple to get the hang of with a beautifully animated cast of creatures that will keep you smiling, even as we ramp up the difficulty. Now, Mike swings to hit, but also taps on the touch surface to move our hero, Lil Slugger, left and right. Beat Sports will make you fall in love with the new remote. You'll swing, swipe, tap, and click to help Lil dominate her alien adversaries. All right, now this here is Big Bouse. His rhythms tend to get really tricky, so let's see if Mike can take the heat. All right, so far so good. Keep up that streak, Mike. All right, this looks serious. Ha-ha! Take that, big bounce, and the crowd goes wild. So that looked like a pretty solid showing to me, but let's see how Mike's performance actually rates. A gold medal. Have you played this before? As we all know, music games are the most fun when you play with friends. So we've made sure to include support for up to four simultaneous players. As long as you have an iPhone or an iPod Touch, you'll be able to drop right in and join the fun. We can't wait to share Beat Sports with you on day one, only on Apple TV. Thank you. Thanks. Now that looks like a lot of fun. But what about shopping on your couch? For that, I'd like to invite up Michelle Peluso from Guilt. Guilt is the go-to destination for stylish shoppers around the world. Every day, we give our more than 9 million members insider access to top fashion deals at up to 70% off. And Apple customers love Guilt. 80% of our mobile sales come from iOS devices, which is a huge testament to Apple and the amazing platform they've created. 
Now, fashion is visual and it's social, which is why we're so excited to bring guilt to your living room on the new Apple TV. Let's take a look. My family and I have a wedding to go to, and all of us need to be outfitted. And now, with the new Apple TV, we can do that together from the comfort of our own home. Let's start with my husband, Mark, because even he likes to shop if it means we don't have to spend the weekend at the mall. This new season, new style sale looks promising. As we select to see more detail, look how seamless it is to swipe across these stylish options. For the first time and exclusive to the new Apple TV experience, you can have your own virtual fashion show right from home. Now, Mark and I love this John Barbados sport coat. So as we selected to see more detail, not only is it a great price off retail, but look at these images. We can take full advantage of Gilt's high resolution photography and show the silhouette of the jacket, how you might want to style it, and most of all, the detail, including this cool leather trim around the cuff with a zigzag stitching. Mark and I quickly decide to buy, and with a simple buy now, the jacket is his. Now, while I'm off daydreaming about how fabulous Mark is going to look, our daughter, Auden Grace, rightly prompts to see what she can wear to the wedding. Let's check out the fall festive party dress sale. Again, gorgeous, lifelike imagery. Auden and her brother, Cole, think this pink Kate Spade dress would be perfect for her. And now, with the new Apple TV remote, we can click play and preview the details without having to go to the product page. Auden loves the cool rhinestones, and I love the fact that it's clean lines and an adorable Peter Pan collar. And once again, with a simple buy now, Mark and Auden are all set for the wedding. Apple's innovation has always been great for guilt, helping us make shopping cooler, faster, and more exciting. And we believe the new Apple TV will make fashion from home even more compelling. We can't wait for you to experience guilt from your living room on the new Apple TV. Thank you, and happy shopping. Thanks. Clearly, that's going to be a big hit in my house. <laughs> Next, I'd like to show you something that's really going to change the way you watch television. And for that, I'd like to bring up Chad Evans from Major League Baseball. Thank you. We're incredibly excited to be here today to share our vision for how Apple TV can enhance the way fans experience live sports. This is my favorite part of the baseball season. It's the pennant races, and teams are battling it out to see who will make the postseason. And we think Apple TV is a fantastic way to follow all the action. So imagine it's the last day of the regular season. When you first open at bat, we'll show you the full MLB TV schedule with all the live games right up front. But if you only want to watch the best plays, you can simply swipe right for highlights. So it looks like the Mets have a really big matchup against the Nationals. So let's watch that game now. As you can see, the picture's absolutely stunning. You're getting full HD video. And because of the power of Apple TV, we can now, for the first time, stream at an amazing 60 frames a second. But if you're a baseball fan, you really want stats. So with one click of your Apple TV remote, we can pull up a ton of live data synced to the TV broadcast. We can show you player stats and pitch tracking the box score, highlights, and scores of all the other games. And with one click, you can go right back to full screen. So let's say you're watching the Mets, but over in the AL East, the Blue Jays are also trying to clinch the division title. Well, MLB TV can send you a look in notification so you never miss a moment. And the best part is, when you open the notification, we can take you straight to split screen. So you can watch both games at the same time. All you have to do is swipe back and forth to change your focus. And of course, it's really easy to zoom in to watch the big play. This is a ball hit a long way to left. The Jesus goes back and looks up. This is awesome. So that's MLB.com at bat for Apple TV. And by the way, if you're a hockey fan, we'll be launching NHL Game Center Live for Apple TV in 2016. Thank you. Thanks. That really shows you the power of Apple TV. You take a linear video, just a baseball game, and now you make it interactive, you get access to stats, you get notifications, you can switch games, you can watch multiple games at the same time, 
It's really, really great. And you'll be able to get all of these apps and more right on the App Store, right on your Apple TV. And the App Store is just as easy to use as it is on the iPhone. You've got top charts, views by categories, and beautiful product pages that show you screenshots and one tap to download. Now, for developers, they can create universal apps. So a single purchase gives you the app on your iPhone, your iPad, and your Apple TV. And for games, you start playing a game on your iPhone, you get home and you start right where you left off, right on your television. It's really cool. Now that's apps. Let's take a look at the powerful hardware that makes this happen. This is the fastest Apple TV we've ever done. It's got a 64-bit A chip. It's got all the latest wireless technologies, and it's just 10 millimeters taller. On the back, you've got power, HDMI, and Ethernet. And of course, it comes with the new Siri remote. Now it communicates via Bluetooth, so there's no need to point the remote at the Apple TV box. It'll even control. I like that too. It'll even control your TV's volume. So there's, this is the only remote you need. It'll even turn the TV on or your AV receiver on and switch the inputs via CEC. It's got a built-in accelerometer and gyroscope, and it lasts for a full three months on a single charge with typical use. And when you need to recharge it, there's a lightning connector right on the bottom. Apple TV comes in two models, 32 gigabytes of flash storage for 149, 64 gigabytes for 199, and it joins the existing Apple TV at $69. Now in addition, we are really thrilled to announce that tvOS is available for developers today. And it's great, because they, st they can start creating apps right now, and they'll even have access to all of the new hardware today. Customers will be able to get the new Apple TV starting in October, and it'll be available in over 80 countries and 100 countries by the end of the year. And that is the new Apple TV, the foundation for the future of television. Touch, Siri, great content, and incredible apps. We think you're really going to love it. Thank you, and I'd like to turn it back to Tim. Great. This is the future of television coming now. Next up is iPhone. <laughs> iPhone has been embraced by customers around the world, and it's growing by leaps and bounds, not only in the United States, but in all corners of the planet, from India to Turkey to Spain. In fact, at a worldwide level last quarter, iPhone grew at three and a half times the rest of the industry. This is truly remarkable. And in China, it's even more incredible. iPhone grew a stunning 75% versus the rest of the industry in decline. iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus have been truly amazing. It's been a phenomenal year. iPhone 6 is the most popular iPhone ever. In fact, these are the most popular phones in the world. But more important to us, they are the most loved phones in the world, with customer satisfaction literally off the charts and far above any other phone. Thank you. Now, so how do you follow a success like this? I've got that question a few times. I am thrilled to show you the newest iPhones.
Introducing the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6S Plus. We are driven to innovate at Apple. You've seen that all morning. And no product is more about innovation than the iPhone. From the very start, the iPhone has been about bringing innovations that are really important in people's daily lives. And as a result, iPhone has changed the world. What we have to show you today is really awesome. And while they may look familiar, we have changed everything about these new iPhones. The team has worked incredibly hard to deliver new capabilities that are truly meaningful in our lives. The iPhones you are about to see are the most advanced iPhones ever. And in fact, they are the most advanced smartphones in the world. To walk you through them, I'd like to invite Phil back up to the stage. Phil? Well, I am truly honored to represent all of the incredible teams at Apple that have worked so hard on this product and be the one to present them to you now, because these new iPhones are absolutely beautiful, the most incredible iPhones we've ever made. This is the brand new rose gold aluminum finish. And while it may look the same, this is an entirely new aluminum. It is an Apple custom alloy of 7,000 series aluminum, the same alloys that are used in the aerospace industry. The new iPhone 6S comes in four metal finishes, silver, gold, space gray, and the new rose gold. And it comes in two sizes, the iPhone 6S with its 4.7 inch retina display and the 6S Plus with its 5.5 inch retina display. And those displays are covered by a brand new glass that's the strongest in the industry. It's made with a dual ion exchange process and they're incredibly durable. Perhaps the most profound feature iPhone has ever brought to the world is multi-touch, right? Multi-touch has changed how we interact with our devices. It taught us about pinch and zoom and swipe. And it's truly a profound innovation. So our team has been hard at work trying to imagine how you take multi-touch to the next generation and further deliver a new experience that's just as profound as the first multi-touch. And they've really done it. It's called 3D touch. 3D Touch is a tremendous breakthrough in, in interacting with our devices. We have a great video to introduce it to you now. With iPhone and multi-touch, we introduced a whole new way to interact with technology. Tapping, swiping and pinching have forever changed the way we navigate and experience our digital world. Until now, these gestures have been defined by a singular plane in two-dimensional space. For iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, we're introducing an entirely new interaction and a whole new dimension to the way you experience your iPhone. It's made possible by a technology called 3D Touch. This is the next generation of multi-touch. For the first time, along with recognizing familiar gestures, iPhone also recognizes force, enabling new gestures, peak and pop. Touch works on the home screen, giving you shortcuts to the things you do frequently. It also works inside applications themselves. Press lightly and it gives you a peek at the content. Continue pressing and it pops you into the content itself. Sensors embedded in the display read how hard you're pressing and react in a smooth, linear way. This is a dynamic system, deeply integrated into iOS 9.
you can dip in and out of where you are without losing a sense of your context. It provides distinct, tactile feedback for your actions, letting you know exactly what you've done and what to expect. While the way that you use 3D Touch is simple, the engineering behind it is some of our most advanced. At its heart are capacitive sensors integrated into the backlight of the Retina HD display. With each press, these sensors measure microscopic changes in the distance between the cover glass and the backlight. These measurements are then combined with signals from the touch sensor and accelerometer to provide fast, accurate, and continuous response to finger pressure. For a truly communicative experience, we had to develop a more precise level of haptic feedback. While the vibrating system on a typical phone requires 10 or more oscillations to reach full power, the Taptic engine in iPhone 6S reaches peak output in just one cycle and stops just as quickly. This allows us to create shorter, more distinct feedback events, like a mini tap lasting just 10 milliseconds and a full tap which lasts 15 milliseconds. Perhaps more than any other system we've designed, 3D Touch is a clear example of how hardware and software developed together can work to define a singular experience. This is the next generation of multi-touch. It makes this iPhone the most advanced iPhone we have ever created. This is unlike any experience you've ever seen in a smartphone, and it took the unique collaboration between our hardware, our software, and design teams to make an experience this profound and new. And now I'd like to give you your very first live demonstration of 3D Touch in action. And to do so, I'd like to invite up none other than our Senior Vice President of Software Engineering, Craig Federici, to give you a demo. Craig? Well, I'm absolutely thrilled to give you this first look at 3D Touch live in action on the new iPhone. Let's take a look now. And we're gonna start with something we do every day, and that's in mail. Now, in the past, in mail, if I had a message like this one at the top that I wanted to get a little bit better look at, I'd tap in like this, I might take a look and realize, no, this, this isn't something I wanna deal with now, so I'd maybe bring up a sheet, mark it as unread, and go back. So I do a lot of in and out, in and out. Well, with 3D Touch, we don't need to do this anymore. So now I can just apply just a little bit of pressure like that and dive right into a message, take a quick look, let go, I'm right back to where I started from. Now, sometimes I take a look at a message, take that peek, get a good look at it, and realize I actually wanna go deeper. So I press deeper, and I'm right in the message. I popped in and I can take a look just like always. Now, occasionally, I'll see a message like this. It looks like Dan Riccio says, check out my new Apple ride. Well, I've been hearing things about this on the internet, so I'm curious to see what we'll <laughs> see here. I'll take a little peek, maybe make some news here today. Oh, exactly. Yeah, and so when I see a message like this, I might want to take action. Well, now I can just flick up and get to actions that easily. Or for common actions, I can just slide to the side to mark something as red, or in this case, send it on its way to the trash. <laughs> so, of course, Force Touch or, or 3D Touch is in integrated throughout the system and all the apps you use most. Let's take a look in messages. Now, here, I've been having a conversation with a friend about an upcoming visit. Messages is spotted a time when she's coming into town. Well, now I can just peek on that time and see what's going on in my calendar, maybe even create an event. The phone also spotted that she sent me a flight number well, I can peek in on that. Look at that, I get details right on the incoming flight time. That's really convenient. Woo! 
know, your friends often send you great ideas about what you guys might do together when they're in town. Here's a web link. And now I don't have to go to Safari. I can just peek in and take a look right here within messages at that web page. And maybe that's something we won't be doing during this visit. So we can see that right inside of messages. But now what's really great about 3D Touch is it lets me take action on apps without even having to open them. So I might want to call one of my favorites. Well, watch what happens. I can get to them right here directly from my home screen. Or maybe I want to listen to music like Beats One or a song from my favorite band. Well, I can do that right here. And sometimes you need to take that emergency selfie and you want to get directly to the selfie camera. Well, now you can. And when you want to preview those selfies to make sure you got the right shot, just peek in. You can slide right back and forth and see that you got the shot you were looking for. It's really handy. Now, when you're on the go with maps, I can just peek in here, get directions right to home, or drop a pin to mark my location so I can find my car. And on locations on the map, I can just peek in like this, get more information on hours, directions, or even call. It's just so much more direct and natural than ever before. Now, 3D Touch also makes it easier to navigate across apps. So in the past, I would do this by double clicking on my home button to get into multitasking. It's pretty cool. I can go, let's say, go into messages. Well, now with 3D Touch, I can just apply a little bit of force on the edge and look what happens. Go right into my applications just like that. I can swipe across and pick an app. And if I want to go back to the previous app, in a single gesture, I can just swipe across between apps. It's totally epic. <laughs> now, we've been able to bring in some of our great third-party developers over the past couple of weeks to see what they could do with 3D Touch, and their feedback has been phenomenal. Dropbox makes it easier now, right from your home screen, to get at your recent documents or upload photos, search your Dropbox. On Facebook, I can update my status or check in right here from my home screen. With WeChat, I can take one of their site videos just like this. And Instagram, now they've really gone to town. I can jump right in to my activity feed. And when I'm in here with these little picture thumbnails, well, of course, I can peek right in. If I want to favorite or like one, I can do it just like this. Or if there's a person I follow and I want to see all of their photos, well, I can, of course, dive deeper and pop right in and take a look at these great images. It's just such a natural way to browse Instagram. And of course, they even made it play videos automatically. So no matter what you like to do with your phone, 3D Touch makes it better than ever. I think you're gonna love it. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Craig. So that's 3D Touch, and it transforms your experience with your iPhone. Inside your iPhone, it's the fastest chip we've ever built into a phone, the new A9 chip, also our third generation 64-bit chip. It's built with a new transistor architecture. It means we can drive faster performance while being more energy efficient. And our software team has worked together with our chip team to enable it to be maximum performance for the kinds of tasks we do every day. And it delivers a big jump in performance. Compared to the A8, it is 70% faster at CPU tasks. And at graphics tasks, it's 90% faster. This is a big jump in performance. It's gonna make using our phone so much faster and a lot more fun. So what can you do to have more fun with your iPhone, with all this graphics performance? Well, to show you, I'd like to invite up the CEO and co-founder of Pixel Toys, Andy Wafer. Well, I'm very proud to show you Warhammer 40,000 Freeblade running on the new iPhone. Not only does it show how revolutionary 3D Touch is going to be for gaming, but it shows the incredible performance leap made with the new A9 chip. For the first time in Freeblade, players are going to get to take command of an Imperial Knight, a massive 50-foot tall battle mech. In Freeblade, players touch to aim and shoot. But 3D Touch adds an entire new dimension to the gameplay experience. Now, 
play is compressed to smoothly zoom in or out, or press a little deeper to switch to a heavier weapon like this battle cannon, all without taking a finger off the screen. That's never been done before. We were also super excited to discover the incredible performance boost of these new devices. When we got our hands on them, we turned everything up to the max. We started by adding higher resolution textures. And then we added more particles. And then we realized we could do even more, so we kept going. We more than doubled the number of AI enemies. We added a huge number of additional destructible objects to the scene to create this more visceral, action-packed experience. We added a focused blur effect that's activated by the 3D touch. We added full-screen bloom to beautifully flare the lights and the explosions. We added dynamic cinematic color grading to the entire scene to create this rich visual look. We never imagined we'd be able to get this intensity of action in the game. And then we added every single other effect we had. Lasers, traces, fire, smoke, and even bigger explosions. With Metal and the a chip, we were amazed to find we could do all of these effects simultaneously in active gameplay, and all at a smooth 60 frames per second. And of course, Freeblade's only gonna look and play like this with 3D Touch and the new iPhone. Three Blades coming to the App Store this holiday season. Thank you, guys. Well, if I don't, if I don't know what shows that that is the most advanced chip ever in a smartphone, I don't know what does. I mean, 3D battle mechs, so much fun. So the A9 has an incredible CPU for performance. It has incredible graphics. We've also, for the first time, built in our motion coprocessor, M9, directly into the chip. This is the coprocessor that helps keep track of things like our health and fitness data throughout the day. And it is now able to be always on as it's integrated. This helps with other tasks as well. For example, we have our new Hey Siri feature. And with Hey Siri, whether you're plugged in or not, you can speak directly to your iPhone and ask Siri things like, Hey Siri, what's it like being you? Hey Phil, hey Phil, hey Phil, hey Phil. There, that's kind of how it feels. Siri's definitely sassy. The new iPhone 6S includes a new second generation Touch ID sensor. It's twice as fast, so it's so lightning quick now when you touch it, you can't believe how quickly it recognizes your fingerprint. Perhaps the feature many of us love the most about our iPhones is the camera. It's an incredible camera, and our customers take stunning photographs with it, like this one. This is taken by a customer. You perhaps you've seen it outside in our World Gallery campaign. It's truly beautiful. But we've got a great camera in iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. And customers are going to love taking photos with it because it's now an all-new iSight camera. In fact, it's a 12-megapixel iSight camera. That's 50% more pixels than before, enabling a tremendous improvement, increase in detail in your photos. But as you know, many sensors, as you add pixels, you degrade image quality in important ways. And our team set a goal that we were not going to add pixels until we could do so without trading off the legendary image quality of the iSight camera. And they've done that. So how did we do it? Well, first, let's talk about the sensor. Let's go inside. Here is the iSight camera sensor, it's got 50% more pixels, and with that, 50% more focus pixels, so it's autofocus, it's even faster and more accurate. Now typically, when you're taking a picture, the light comes in, and the photons excite the photo sensors. And as you pack the pixels closer together, there are artifacts. This is called crosstalk. You see the photodiodes there, and the colors bleeding between them. If they get too close, you get inaccurate color, you get noise in your images. And there are a number of techniques our team has worked on to help reduce that to maintain image quality. For example, we've taken the color filters that sit above the photodiodes and moved them down on top of it. That helps. In addition, we've got great technology called deep trench isolation. If you take one thing away today, you'll tell people, I learned about deep trench isolation. 
It separates the photodiodes and helps to maintain very accurate and precise color. Well, the reality is we don't need to know any of this. All we have to know is that we can take even better pictures with an iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. As we do every time, we like to give our phones to great photographers to travel around the world and show us what can be done with these incredible eyesight cameras. So the photos we're going to show you now were taken with iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, and they have not been retouched in any way. This is just as they come out of the iPhone. These were taken in Iceland. One of the things you see, as our goal was, fantastic color. The skin tones are really accurate. The depth of field is incredible. This is also taken in Iceland. This is Hershey Mountain. Guess how it got its name? Now, what's important in this is the sky. It's a beautiful, rich sky. It has no noise in it that you can see, which is one of the artifacts you would get as you pack pixels closer together. There's a beautiful picture of the Blue Lagoon in Iceland. You might have guessed that's a lagoon, but can you guess what this is? It's amazing, painterly. This is a photo taken from a plane down onto a river delta system. The level of detail with the 12 megapixel sensor is fantastic. Here's another detailed photo. This is a photo over Manhattan. Again, tremendous improvement in the incredible detail of these photographs. Here's a really tough one. This was taken in a ferry in New York, and it's challenged by the fact they're both natural light and artificial light. Again, not retouched in any way, the iPhone 6S camera nails exposure and accurate color. It's beautiful. Here's a photo taken in Italy. The buildings are beautiful, and again, the sky rendered in very low noise. You get that beautiful salmon color just at sunset. Here's a photo taken in almost no light on a river in China. You can see incredible level of detail in the water despite there being almost no light. Here's a couple animal photos. Here's one of two East African crown cranes. Very cool. And last. This is a scarlet macaw. This is a bird with attitude. Its color is beautiful. The colors are exactly accurate. It nailed them. And as we zoom in, you can see the incredible level of detail and sharpness from that 12 megapixel sensor. Now with the bigger sensor, we can also take even bigger panoramas, and panoramas are loved by our customers. This is a 63 megapixel panorama photo. Let's zoom in and pan across it. Again, you see the accurate blue sky with low noise. You see incredible exposure across the scene, and you don't see any stitching lines. It's just a beautiful photo. So the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus can take incredible photos better than ever before. It can also take amazing videos, HD videos, and now for the first time in an iPhone, 4K videos. So what's a 4K video? Well, when you shoot your video, you get a higher degree of detail. In every frame, there are 8 million pixels. It's an incredibly detailed video. And let me give you an example. We shot a video here. Again, this is directly out of an iPhone 6S. Now, what's truly remarkable is that video was shot on an iPhone 6S and edited in iMovie on that iPhone. So incredible to shoot and edit 4K videos directly on your iPhone. Along with the iSight camera, we have a new FaceTime camera. It's a 5 megapixel FaceTime HD camera. So you can take incredibly detailed selfies of you and your friends and their friends, and they'll all come out beautiful. Now, as you know, on the back side with our iSight camera, we have a great flash, the best in the industry. It's called the True Tone Flash. And it takes flash pictures by matching the ambient light and giving you more accurate flash lighting color in your photos. 
We wanted to bring that technology to the front side for your FaceTime camera. And of course, we realized, well, wait a minute, we already have a beautiful big LED backlit display. So we're going to use the retina display to be a retina flash, in fact, one that matches the ambient lighting color and could be a true tone flash to perfectly match your photos. And this took some amazing engineering from the team. Not only do we match the colors, but inside with the display chip, they've engineered it so that it will light up three times brighter when you need to use it for a flash. So in even very low light, you get incredible flash photos from your FaceTime camera. So that's the FaceTime and iSight cameras in the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. And you're going to love taking photos with them. The one thing about the photos, if you look over time, the camera team has been doing remarkable work year after year. We're increasing the sensors to make them more capable, adding autofocus pixels. We're improving the lenses to be even more sharp and aligned and accurate. We've got incredible image processing that's faster and lower power and on and on. Great features, auto HDR, burst mode, panoramas, on and on. And they all are in services delivering one thing, a beautiful picture. And what are pictures? They're these magical moments just frozen in time that we can keep forever and share with our family and friends. And with iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, you can now take even more stunning photos. But what if we could do something more? Teams come up with something truly brilliant. What if you could press with 3D touch on your photos and this happened? This is entirely new technology. It's called Live Photos. This is remarkable. We can take photos just as we're used to, like this beautiful panorama or, or beautiful outdoor scene. And then you press on it, and you see the waters ripple, reminding you of the moment you took the photo. Or you have a street scene, beautiful sunlight, you press on it and the cars begin to move. And these live photos can have sound. When you go into your photo roll and you swipe across them, you see a little bit of a moment of vitality, a sense of how alive they are. It's a beautiful experience, unlike any other way of interacting with photos. So how do you take a live photo? Well, that's the amazing part. You don't do anything different. You just take a photo as you always have. And it's the same beautiful high resolution, now 12 megapixel photo. On top of the status bar, you see a new icon. Those three concentric circles lit up yellow. By default, it's on. You just take pictures. And now they're live photos. And when you're taking them, you get a small little indication that it's live, because it'll capture a second and a half on either side of the photo. These are still photos. They're not videos. The 12 megapixel high quality still images with all the incredible effects you want on a photo. But we extend the capture moment just before and just after you took it. And we do it in a space efficient way so they don't take up much more room. And the teams have done an amazing job to support this across all of Apple's products. So you can watch live photos on OS X El Capitan, you can see them on your iPad, you can see them on your iPhones, and yes, you can see them on your Apple Watch and with the new photo face you can set a live photo as your watch face. So every time you raise your arm, it comes alive as it's telling you the time. This is amazing. Yes. We have so many developers that do an incredible job with photo support in their apps. We want to make sure they support live photos too. So we're creating new developer APIs. And we've been working with some developers like Facebook will be supporting live photos within the Facebook app on iOS this year. So that's the new camera system. We also have incredible advancements in our wireless as well. LTE has LTE Advanced, so it's twice as fast. And there are 23 bands of wireless LTE networking. That's the most in any smartphone. In fact, it makes iPhone unquestionably the best phone for traveling around the world. Wi-Fi is faster too, it's up to twice as fast. And of course every iPhone 6S and 6S Plus runs iOS 9 and all the great features that we've talked about from the new advancements in Siri 
to proactive assistance, the new news app, which is amazing for reading news on the go on your iPhone, the new notes app, and of course transit in maps. You've probably heard that more and more Android customers are switching to iPhones. And it's true. Who can blame them, right? So we want to help that. You're going to find a new app on the Android store from Apple that you can download to your Android phone. When you set up your iPhone, it will make it easier to get all your important information over to your iPhone. It's the neighborly thing to do, right? Well, iPhone Success and Success Plus comes with some great accessories. There's some new charging docks that match the metal finishes of your iPhone. There's new leather covers in five beautiful new leather materials. There's new silicone covers in 11 new colors. In fact, one of them is in this great product red. So that's iPhone Success and Success Plus. Of course, as all Apple products are, they're made in the most environmentally friendly way possible. Mercury-free LED display glass. Come on, you can say it with me. Arsenic-free displays, BFR-free, beryllium-free, PVC-free, and of course, highly recyclable aluminum and glass. Tim told you, these are our most advanced phones ever. In fact, the most advanced phones in the world. Just look at everything embodied in these new phones. The new 3D touch experience, transforming how we interact with our phones. The strongest material yet, our 7000 series aluminum. Strongest cover glass in the industry. Our new 64-bit third generation A9 chip. Our second generation Touch ID, twice as fast. Faster LTE, twice as fast. Faster Wi-Fi, twice as fast. Our new 12 megapixel iSight camera with 4K video editing. New 5 megapixel FaceTime HD camera. A retina flash on the front side so you can take FaceTime pictures in low light. And of course, I think you're going to love this feature when you get to use it, live photos. So what's new iPhones going to cost? Well, let's bring back the previous generation and start with that. iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus, which have been huge hits around the world, were priced this way, starting at $199 on iPhone 6 and $299 on iPhone 6 Plus. And this is typical uh, carrier contracts, 24-month carrier contracts. We're very proud to tell you the new iPhone 6S, the new 6S Plus will come in at the exact same prices and same configurations. And now this is how our lineup will look. iPhone 5S moves down to become the entry-level iPhone available on 24-month contracts for free. iPhone 6 and 6 Plus are going to be $100 less expensive. We think there are a lot of customers that are going to be very excited about this. And the 6S and 6S Plus take their place at the Tom Beth end of the line. Now, as we know, many customers now are not buying their phones on a 24-month contract. They're instead buying them with installment plans. So here's typical installment plans for these new phones. As you can see, and they will vary by carrier, prices begin as low as $19 a month and go up to $31 a month. So the simple truth is, on an installment plan, any iPhone you want is pretty affordable. So in addition to this pricing, uh, we have one other set of pricing to tell you about for iPhone, and that is a great program starting in our Apple retail stores, starting first here in the US, and then growing around the world. It's a program called the iPhone Upgrade Program. So if you're like me, and you like to have a new iPhone every single year, this is the best way to do that. With the iPhone Upgrade Program, you can get a new iPhone every year. When you get it, you choose your carrier. It is an unlocked phone. It includes the Apple Care Plus program, and it starts at just $32 a month. And again, it's a 24-month installment, but you can get a new iPhone every single year. So when can you get the new iPhone 6S and 6S Plus? Well, you can pre-order starting this Saturday, September 12th. And then it'll be available in just two weeks, September 25th, in the following countries, Australia, Canada, China, France, Germany, Hong Kong, Japan, New Zealand, Puerto Rico, Singapore, the United Kingdom, and of course, the United States. By the end of this year, we'll have rolled out iPhone 6S and 6S Plus in over 130 countries with over 400 carrier partners. We're also going to want to run iOS 9 on all of our devices. So I'm very happy to tell you that it will become available just next week on September 16th.
With iOS, of course, you want to have your iCloud account supporting all that awesome capability. It comes with five gigs for free with each account, but we have some new pricing if you want to upgrade to more uh, capacity. So we want to make sure you knew about that. The capacity for iCloud now is 50 gigabytes for just 99 cents a month, 200 gigabytes for 299, and a full terabyte for 999 a month. That's half the price of previously. So that is all the great news on the new iPhones. Back to Tim. So, these new iPhones are truly the most advanced iPhones we've ever created. And we're so proud of them. We want to tell the world about them. And to do that, we've made an ad. I'd love to show it to you. This is iPhone 6S. Not much has changed, except it responds to the pressure of your finger. So you can peek into stuff and pop stuff open, which changes how you play a song. Read a text, read an email, read the news. Wait, you read the news? Yep. Of course you do. Now you can change apps like this, pay up more places like this, and the new color looks like this. It's rose gold, it's awesome. And Siri is more helpful than ever. Hey Siri, show me photos of tortellini. Here are some images of tortellini. Maybe get takeout? The camera shoots 4K video now, which changes how your movies look. Nice. Even selfies have changed. Now your screen is the flash. That's going to get like a million likes. Thanks. Actually, photos themselves have changed. They move now. You just touch them. So yeah, that's what's changed. I love that ad. Huge morning for us. All new models and new bands for the Apple Watch with WatchOS 2 bringing incredible capabilities and native apps right to your wrist. An all new bigger and more powerful iPad, the most powerful we've ever created, the iPad Pro. The future of television, Apple TV and the most advanced iPhones we've ever created and the most advanced in the world, iPhone 6S and iPhone 6S Plus. We've got two great hands-on experiences for you today to look at all of these amazing products. Make sure that you go to both of them. They're quite different and you'll miss something if you don't go to both. I'd like to take a minute and recognize everyone from Apple who worked so hard on delivering all of the great things you've seen this morning. Please stand up. I am applauding you. It is such a privilege. It is such a privilege to work with this team that commit themselves to doing the best work of their lives to make other people's lives better. Now, since before we go, since we're in a legendary music venue, we thought it would be only appropriate to close with a sensational music act. We have one of my absolute favorite bands here. They're wrapping up a successful world tour that included 43 countries. They have an incredible five platinum singles on their latest album. But more importantly, they are great people and their music is absolutely amazing. Please join me in welcoming One Republic. <laughs>
like a swinging vine, swing my heart across the line, in my face is flashing signs, seek it out and you shall find old, but I'm not that old, young, but I'm not that bold, and I don't think the world is so This song specifically is for Tim. Hope when you take that jump, you don't fear the fall. And hope when the water rises, you build a wall. I hope when the crowd screams out, the stream in your I hope if everybody runs, you choose to stay. Mm -hmm. I hope that you fall in love and it hurts so bad. Yeah.
Thank you guys. Uh, we have one more song for you. First of all, thank you to Apple for having us. We have so many friends uh, in Cupertino, and thank you for having us today. Total surprise for us. We didn't even know we were playing until 10 minutes ago, so you, you, you pulled it off. Second, it's hot as hell. Taking it off. Waiting for the eye jacket. So this is a song we put out. Um, two albums ago, and I know you hear a lot of stories about artists, they make records, you work for a year, two years, and the last thing you do that you just kind of like half asleep throw out becomes the biggest thing on that album. This is one of those songs, we still don't know how this got heard. I apologize in advance for all the times you've been in Whole Foods and you've heard this song, <laughs> buying your hummus and your, you know, gluten-free whatever. Here we go. By the way, iPhone success is gluten-free. <laughs> okay, if you know this, you can help me sing it. Woke up in London yesterday, found myself in the city near Piccadilly. Don't really know how I got here. But I got some pictures on my phone, new names and numbers that I don't know. I dress to places like Abbey Road. There turns to night, not turns to whatever we want. We're young enough to say, hey. Oh, this has got to be a good life. This has got to be a good life. This could really be a good life, good life. I said, oh, you got this feeling that you can't buy. Like the city is on fire tonight. This has got to be a good life, good, good life. Ask you. 
Thank you guys for hanging with us. Enjoy this beautiful city. It's one of the best on earth. Hey, you were great. One Republic! You guys are great. You hot? Thank you for joining us. Make sure you go to the hands-on areas.